welcome to the Symphony Limited Q4 FY24 earnings conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Aniruddha Joshi from ICICI Securities. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yes, uh, thanks, Darwin. On behalf of ICICI Securities, we welcome you all to Q4 FY24 Results Conference Call of Symphony Limited. We are with the senior management represented by Mr. Rachel Vakeri, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. N Mr. Rupesh Shah, Managing Director, Corporate Affairs, and Mr. Amit Kumar, Group CEO and Executive Director. Uh, and now I hand over the call to the management for initial comments on the quarterly and annual performance. Then we will open the floor for question and answer session. Thanks and over to you, sir. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and a warm welcome to all of you to our quarterly and annual uh, and call. standard. Post that standalone PAT stands at 46 crore, otherwise it would have been about 54 crore. Here as a whole, standalone financial, top line is 796 crore, down by 10%. PAT of 153 crore, which is 19.2% up by 60 BPS and our core capital employee in the business stands at about 44 crore, translating into ROC of 362% and RONW of 18% and as on March 24, our treasury, that is surplus fund, stands at about 395 crore. So about EBITDA margin, YOY, almost remains the same, up from 20% to 20.2%. Coming to subsidy-wise performance, Climate Technology Australia, top line 185 pro, reduced by 18%, EBITDA minus 23 crore versus negative 43 crore year before and PAT negative 25 versus negative 43 crore year before. For IMCO Mexico, top line is 178 crore up by 51 percentage, EBITDA 27 crore more than double while PAT is about 11 crore and there also there is a significant improvement in GP margin and EBITDA margin percentage. About GSK China, the top line is up by 36 percentage, 44 crore. EBITDA is 5 crore. And also happy to inform that Almost for last two years, GSK China is completely self-sufficient to meet with its financial needs, including working capital as well as its business growth. So for last two years, no more financial assistance or loan in any form is required by GSK. About Symphony Brazil, which is more like a trading subsidiary, so this was a actually a first year of operation and registered 26 crore of top line and positive EBITDA of 3 crore. Coming to outlook, so starting March, it has been a decent summer. There has been all around phenomenal demand and summer sets in early in southern India, eastern India and Maharashtra and we are witnessing excellent demand across all these regions, across the models. 
and still two more months to go and as demand as per the summer vaccine central india and northern india is likely to pick up further so as you know symphony very well maintains its number one status in air cooler industry <clears throat> and we are very confident about the long term structural growth and performance in domestic as well as overseas market on account of intensified heat wave and climate change which which is already witnessing and will further witness strong tailwind in air coolers and now as we are witnessing improved performance in subsidiary companies we are actually leveraging complementary strengths of our international business which is our unique moat in many respect coming to climate technology in two parts one is initiatives which have been already implemented or in the final phase of completion there has been a substantial rationalization of overhead that is cost of doing the business when we acquired the company in inr its annual overhead were 77 crore in fy 23 24 we reduced to 49 crore and next year it is likely to be around 38 crore there has been decent rationalization in gross profit margin percentage especially in last two quarters so as it can be seen in q4 of 24 gross profit margin percentage stood at 40 percentage versus negative 7 percentage while in q3 of fy24 it was positive 40 percentage versus 28 percentage in first two quarters as these measures were not implemented actual effect is of last two quarters this is mainly on account of calibrated pricing and revamped product portfolio and the sourcing mix and further initiatives which are already in pipeline and we believe that by september 25 further measures which will be executed one is completely outsourced business model which has which is progressing well and by september 25 as far as portable air coolers are concerned they will be outsourced from india and the rest of their other products <coughs> will be outsourced from china so complete supply chain oem products etc have been already set and decided there is a complete revamping of the product category for which we believe there there is a decent traction and they are also reasonably and decently profitable and now we have also a decent distribution channel that should help us to really scale up thank you so uh, we are open for question answer thank you sir we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touch tone telephone if you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue you may press star and two hey there is some disturbance so uh, uh, before the question queue is getting formed uh, just uh, anirudh here uh, just two questions from my uh, side uh so we had introduced one kitchen fan also and uh, we have also uh, at least uh, partially introduced the personal air cooler also so any update on these two initiatives that we had done so in terms of scale or uh, are these products pan india or ha- how has been the performance of these two products that is uh, question number 1 question number 2 is uh, uh about air purifier so now uh, since a larger public is aware about the air quality pollution all these details uh, so is there any potential to have air purification benefits in air coolers also uh, the way fan companies are now offering uh, air purification uh, 
benefits also so just your views on that and uh, the third question can you elaborate a bit more on the uh, region wise growth rates I means let's say metro uh, tier 1 cities or uh, rural markets and in terms of the uh, probably the market shares that we would be having in these regions and uh, if there is any uh, gain in the market share yeah thank you uh, i'll request amit kumar to answer these questions so uh, anil uh, i'll pick these up in the sequence that uh, that you talked about uh, so starting with uh, our fans and the personal fans uh, that you mentioned Uh, these are uh, niche products, and we are following a focus channel strategy for them. Uh, we have uh, taken a conscious call of uh, not uh, spreading these across the entire uh, country and in the entire channel that we have. So these are going into niche channels. As of now, we are focusing on a select set of cities uh, in the double digits across the country. Uh, most of these are metros and uh, tier one cities. Uh, and for this year the focus is on building the markets in these cities uh, for these products uh, as we go forward uh, we would figure out how uh, we expand uh, the distribution uh, across uh, more regions in chat uh, the second point around the air purifier uh, that uh, i i do understand that's a category that has uh, gotten a consumer sort of uh, uh, understanding and in some markets at least acceptance Uh, i do wish to highlight some of our models uh, come with already come with the ipo which is an air filtration uh, technology that we introduced uh, uh, many years back into a select uh, premium range of products uh, that we have uh, that continues to be there uh, and uh, those models we have made available across the country uh, so to that extent uh, a subset of our air coolers already offer air purification benefits Uh, and consumers can uh, use uh, these products uh, if they want both cooling and air purification as a combined benefit from the product uh, regarding the regions and market shares uh, obviously we are collecting early information but i think it's too uh, too premature at this point in time this is broadly one third into the season uh, to talk about market shares for now uh, so allow us to hold on to this maybe uh, end of the june quarter we'll have a better sense of how we we are doing on the market share for this season okay sure sir uh, very helpful thanks thank you the next question is from the line of nesar parik from native capital please go ahead Hello. Hi. Uh, thanks for taking the question. Uh, my first. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, the line is not very clear for you. I request you to please use the handset while you're speaking. Uh, hello. Hi. Is this better? Yes. Much better. So please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, so my first question is, if we look at our A and B spend, right? For this quarter, it is almost half. Uh, it was standalone, and maybe even console. So are we, uh, you know, in a bid to uh, save costs? Are we under investing in the channel? uh and how should we think about it and how should you think about the ANP spend for the next year no so it's more about year as a whole as such uh, due to some strategic reasons in march 23 it was disproportionate high and secondly considering current year the way in which summer is shaping up we decided to spend somewhat higher amount in june quarter So ultimately, it is year as a whole. Of course, Y O Y also in 23-24 there is a decline in advertisement and sales promotion expenses. But just to remind you, in 22-23 there were some of the one-time advertisement and sales promotion expenses, more like test marketing, market research, uh, somewhat related to D to C e-commerce initiatives, etc. Also. so what is in uh, current year as a whole it's more like a normalized uh, advertisement and sales promotion expenses uh okay uh, a second question is uh, you know can you give mix between how much you know broad channel mix how much is from home and how much is our industrial uh, and also you know within the home segment how much is gt mt online just some rough directional idea 
So as far as uh, central lines and ducted air coolers, overall on a console basis, which constitutes about 15 to 17 percentage of the top line, uh, we don't have uh, company-wise uh, data. Uh, and uh, profitability-wise also, it is almost proportionate. What I mean to say, centralized air cooling is also equally profitable. What was your uh, second question? Uh, sorry, GT, MT and online mix? So this is too early because uh, just one month of the current summer is over. However, YOY and in absolute quantity, it is showing phenomenal growth. But all put together in 23-24, it would have contributed uh, almost 30 percentage or one third of the sale, which con consists of large format stores, RCS, e-commerce, D2C, institution, etc. Okay, so that 30-40% uh, and the remaining would be GT, right? That's how we should think. That's right. Okay, fine. Uh, got it. All right. Uh, thank you so much. I'll come back and look at Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Bala Subramanian from Aryanth Capital. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank you so much for taking my questions. Sir, my first question uh, regarding the CT Australia. What's your thought process on changes in in-house business to outsource the business model? So what is going to change in the next over two to three years? And the second question, uh, we are uh, uh, in the pipeline of uh, our launches of in heaters, heaters side. So, so what kind of opportunities we have on heaters and uh, portable ACs? So, uh, so the Australian subsidiary were, had always was always a heater come cooler company. Um, so it isn't as if heaters are a new introduction. However. All this while, it was focused on gas ducted heaters. Uh, the big change is that we are uh, we are transitioning from gas to electric. Um, so we are slowly reducing our um, reliance on the on the gas ducted heating business and uh, introducing with the introduction of electric products. Um, uh, you know, hoping to scale up the electric uh, heating uh, sort of category. Uh, so it's just a matter of changing from gas to electric. We were always in heaters. Um, so amongst the new products, as far as heating is concerned, yes, we have panel heaters which can be on the wall. We have oil-filled column heaters which are like portable heaters. Uh, we have built-in uh, electric fireplaces. So these are all, and we have strip heaters which are mounted on the ceiling for verandas and uh, uh, you know for outdoor areas. So these are new heating products that we have introduced uh, amongst. Amongst air conditioners, yes, we have introduced uh, portable air conditioners. Um, th that range too is being um, uh, sort of um, you know fine-tuned and calibrated for the summer to come. Um, and all of these products are going to be sourced from China. Uh, these products have been specially developed for us, given by uh, as per our specifications by vendors in China. Um, and uh, the products which Climate Technologies uh, used to make, uh, you know, till until uh, so far, uh, which is air coolers, uh, roof-mounted air coolers and gas ducted heaters are also being outsourced to various um, manufacturers in China. Uh, only portable air coolers which Symphony specializes in will go from India. All the other products will be outsourced to China. As a result of all this, uh, we are on one hand uh, significantly uh, contracting our um, you know, manufacturing uh, capabilities and our, the space required in our overheads, as is, as is evident in the, in the numbers that we have shown of, uh, you know, of CODB uh, reduction, uh, but it also leads to significant reduction in our 
in our cost of goods sold uh, and an improvement in our gross margin, which is also evident in the numbers which I've been uh, shared with you. Uh, so this also allows us uh, to completely focus on um, on sales and distribution and not be, uh, you know, not uh, sort of divert any of our bandwidth on manufacturing uh, related matters. Um, so uh, this is something which we did 15 years ago, um, uh, you know, when we acquired our company in Mexico. It was also a fully vertically integrated manufacturing facility, and we transformed its entire business model um, into an asset light, capital light business model. Um, and um, so divested all the manufacturing, divested the real estate, outsourced everything partly within Mexico uh, or to China or to India. And so the focus solely remains on uh, on sales and also the cost, uh, you know, you are able to reduce the cost of doing business, reduce the cost of goods sold, and most importantly, it becomes a variable cost business model. Uh, so in other words, that's what we had done in, 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 in Mexico several years ago. We did it in China recently, and now we are in the process of doing in uh, Australia as well. Uh, the way we call it, you know, in India is uh, we are trying to symphonize these companies uh, so uh, so sort of adopt a business model and a philosophy uh, which is very much akin to what we have done at symphony uh, so i hope i've answered your question uh, yes sir uh, sir how much uh, price hike uh, uh, like uh, done in q4 and what kind of price hike we can expect uh, in coming quarters and because of the demand is very strong because of the summer seasons you could throw more light on the demand side and the price hike side um there will not be uh, i suppose I, I assume you are referring to india yes sir. yeah so there will not be a significant price hike in the in this quarter uh, there will be some minor price hikes but a lot of it is already sort of you know a lot of the uh, sort of uh, uh, prices have already been committed um, so we will not be able to uh, you know sort of change the price significantly there will be some minor uh, price improvements so don't expect much on that front yeah so is there one or two percent in that range, sir, or is it even more? No, you can say in that range, yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mayur Park area from Wealth Managers. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, am I audio? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, good afternoon, and thank you for taking my question. It's been a... Uh, uh, now coming back to Infamy and uh, trying to see over these years how it is done. Uh, so a couple of questions from my side, uh, uh, my regards to Nitesh Bhai also. Uh, so, uh, in a, such a strong uh, environment of summer season, uh, you know, even globally there is in most parts of the world and in India, uh, is there a risk that we face a stock out situation? Again, a good question. To some extent, that is... Uh, uh, sort of happening in some select models in you know in our case uh, however our operations team is uh, you know working day in day and night uh, to meet with the demand uh, but yes uh, it is a you know an unprecedented situation and uh, not only us but pretty much the entire market whether air coolers air conditioners are facing a similar situation but like i said our operations team is uh, trying its best to uh, uh, be able to fulfill the demand and uh, you know uh, so yeah uh, sir uh, we uh, you know we have always maintained a flexible manufacturing and rather capacity because uh, you know it helps us to optimize our efforts on sales distribution as well as you know uh, capacity uh, change also which we can monitor so in situations like this you know after I, if i remember such a strong summer uh, no early rains and uh, across the, it has come after a couple of years, after COVID, even before COVID, I remember it was 16, 17 times there were such, uh, and we had broken uh, you know, a lot of financial records for us uh, at time based on that uh, capacity. In uh, today's time, uh, is it not possible to you know actually uh, take away strong market share from peers who will have to expand and we should have situations even for 
and rather increase our mass numbers. But your line seems to be breaking up in between, sir. Is it clear now? It's it's slightly better. So please go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's a question. Yeah, it's a good question, and that is what we are striving our best to uh, to do. Uh, so, like I said, our operations team is uh, you know leaving no stone unturned uh, to be able to meet the demand. So, who knows? But can we gain market share in this time like this? We, we probably already have, although at this stage we are not bothered about tracking that, that we will see at the end of the summer at this point. We are just sort of focused on, on uh, you know, uh, fulfilling orders. But I'm sure that is, that is going to be the outcome um, at the end of the summer. Okay. Sir, uh, uh, just continuing with similar questions, uh, when we had such strong summers in the past, in the, I remember that our EBITDA margin were in the region of 28 in the domestic part, I'm saying. In the domestic part, 28, 30% also it has gone. Do you think in the next FY25, because our season is actually June, June quarter to June in that sense, uh, so do we think that FY25 can be a year where we come back uh, uh, to our, I know it's in a situation, but for for one of the years, is it possible that we hit that kind of back to our uh, old uh, uh, margins given the strong uh, tailwind we have? Um, you know, first of all, I really appreciate your being so much on top of all the numbers, historical numbers. Uh, that's very remarkable. Um, and um, I may also say that our uh, margin at its best was 30 EBITDA margin was 32 percent. Um, so okay. Not only 28 percent, was 32 percent. Yeah, yeah, I stand corrected. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. No, no, no problem. But so the point, the, the what I'm saying is that our endeavor and our our uh, um, our aspiration is to be back to that level. Uh, it might not happen this year, but you know, in the next two years or three years or so, that is where we aspire to be back again. Oh, acha. So, okay, okay. Remember, I said aspire, right? So I we will be certainly doing our best to do that. Uh, so, uh, uh, so don't hold me to that. Sir, is it because compared to those historical years, I means we still remain an outsourced model. Our operations have not gone up. So, is it just because that over these years the pricing has, uh, you know, the inflationary on the cost side must have gone up, but our pricing may not have. Uh, taken the uh, as proportionate increase over longer periods of time, and hence our margins will take time to come to those. Or is it something else at play? Because uh, in a strong no, no, summer, we can stay the nothing else. There is nothing else. What you said at the outset is exactly what the reason is. Uh, costs went up during COVID, and uh, uh, you know because of sort of tepid summers, uh, our pricing uh, did not uh, sort of keep up with the cost increases, uh, which is why there has been a sort of a shrinkage in our gross and EBITDA margins. But uh, you know with the trend of this summer, uh, uh, you know we will certainly be revising um, you know our uh, pricing. Uh, for for uh, you know, going forward, and we will gradually inch uh, back towards, or we'll try to inch back towards our historical margins. Okay, uh, so normally for our orderly, uh, can I just uh, continue with uh, small questions? To, uh, please? I'm sorry. Hello. Uh, can I just continue for a uh, small questions? Two more, small. Yeah. I think if you can join the queue, there are several other people waiting, so I think it will be... I'll join, sir. Just one last question from my side. I'll, I'll join the queue after that. So last question. Thank you. Uh, uh, sir, uh, our uh, normally ordering takes place uh, prior to our December season, right, from our dealer's perspective. It's just that the deliveries happen later on, but the ordering happens much before that. Uh, is it, are you seeing that uh, the ordering pattern post-March has actually undergone a change? Or is it that... Uh, there is a similar, it's just that the uh, estimation of demand was a similar kind and it's just the execution of that demand. We are seeing a structural change in the way now the ordering is also, even in this season, is still happening. No, no, there, so is no and I change. there is no structural change. Uh, this is, uh, um, no, it's only that uh, the demand is coming regions where modern retail and or regional retail ch chains are strong and and which do not buy in the off season it is the gt which buys in the off season uh, so uh, so which is why what we are seeing this otherwise there is no structural change 
ओके सर थैंक यू सो मच आई जॉइन दिस थैंक यू लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वी रिक्वेस्ट यू टू प्लीज रिस्ट्रिक्ट योर क्वेश्चंस टू टू पर पार्टिसिपेंट वी हैव द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ मनोज गौरी फ्रॉम इक्विरिस सिक्योरिटीज प्लीज गो अहेड या थैंक यू फॉर द अपॉर्चुनिटी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट्स अ गुड टू हियर दैट यू आर एंजॉइंग द समर uh it's quite a while now that we are actually going to a very smooth summer so so my question would be if we look at probably lost market still is not operating to its potential so do we see any reverse loss probably we can have done significantly better probably in the upcoming quarter uh while uh, manoj manoj before you go any further your voice is not clear is it better now sir Sir, if you can use the headset, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it better now? Yeah, yeah. So, sir, I was just uh, uh, regarding to the North markets. Probably, it's not operating at its uh, potential. So, uh, do we see any business loss? Probably, we could have uh, say, uh, done significantly better volumes in the upcoming quarter. Or we are seeing so strong demand from the South market. Probably. uh we are just trying to meet the demand requirement over there so so just any uh, thought on the overall demand environment uh if so, it no, so north, it's a little uh, maybe the north will fire now you know uh, now the summer generally sets in in the north a little later um, so i it's not that uh, you know north is not going to happen it's certainly um, it's just a matter of time and once north fires then that will also just add to uh, you know uh, what we are already doing right and so so far the demand supply situation probably uh, we are able to meet it right yes yes because again the kind of products which sell in the north and the kind of products we sell in the south are somewhat different uh, so the manufacturing facilities are also different so there will be no overlap or very marginal overlap um, you know in that and and so there shouldn't really be any problem with that yeah. right sir So, uh, secondly, if you look at the gross margins, we did somewhere around 48 percent for the full year at standalone level. Uh, this is despite the profit sharing that we do with our subsidiary. Uh, can we expect some improvement over there? Or probably this should be normal case at least for next couple of years. For FI 25 and 26. I really don't. no haven't thought that far or we aren't really looking at that but we like i said to the it to in response to the previous question you know we are uh, aspiring to and working towards uh, uh, towards in the, in the direction of restoring our historical ebitda margins so in the process you know everything will go up whether it is gross margin or profit after tax or profit before tax whatever you know so it's a matter of uh time uh, but that's the direction in which uh, we would be heading right sir so uh, more importantly the parameter will be ebitda margin because once we take care of ebitda margin whether it is cudb or whether it is bill of material everything is accounted for and secondly you would have also observed that in q424 uh even though top line is up by 5 percentage our ebitda margin percentage is up by more than 530 bps right And right same is about console not only for q4 but year as a whole right sir i was just coming to that because if you look at we did some uh, we did took some initiatives to for improving the on the cost side especially on the subsidiary and probably the positive impact is visible during fy24 so uh, and in fact you, uh, you have already uh, given some indication on fy25 as well just want to understand on revenue side for climate technologies probably we have taken a lot of efforts over there but revenues have declined significantly during the current year so what is the road map ahead probably where do we see this revenues from 180 odd crores moving in next couple of years so uh, that would be helpful so our first uh, endeavor would be to to sort of recoup the lost revenue you know what it was last year or the year before so our first endeavor would be to be back at that level right sir 
sir, uh, uh, lastly, uh, if you look at the receivable days, uh, that has increased from roughly around 35 days to 53 days. Uh, we normally we keep it very tight. So just wanted to understand any one-offs over there. So uh, again, that is because of the the, the significant uh, you know so far the business uh, that has come is more from regions where there is a domination of modern retail and regional chain stores where we do extend credit and online also. Uh, so it's it's more a function of that, but uh, it will certainly be reined in um, you know in the in the days in in a few weeks, couple of weeks. And mind that that billing starts from third week or fourth week of February until middle of May. So typically, it will be at its peak as on 31st March. Right, right. Thanks a lot and wish you all the best, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Siddhant from Goodwill. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, duty. Uh, 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 the this summer as a inflection point for the commercial uh, cooling, or is this still a time that some time away? I see inquiries around that, or how that business going? Again, it appears as if you are using a, a speaker, uh, you know, you know, you're not using a handset. Would you mind using your handset because your voice yeah, is not yeah. clear? Can you hear me uh, better? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, so in the industrial uh, cooling segment, uh, are you seeing any rise in inquiries? Is that as an inflection point, or is that, does that still, still, you know, seem to be far away? Rise because of the current summer is that is that what you are saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, of course, of course, because of the, the spike in heat, there is uh, a much larger level of uh, inquiries. Uh, and uh, orders also. So, of course, what we are seeing in domestic is also something we are witnessing in industrial coolers. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, apart from that, uh, do you, where's the channel inventory? Like you said, it's uh, clearing out. So, you expect, uh, where was it like six to eight months or 12 months ago, last season? Yeah, of course, it was much higher than it is now. It is pretty much gone now. It's pretty much gone wrong. So technically, even after the summer, an H1 could continue to do well, right? That, that's right. That's what we expect. And on going back to the 25 or 28 percent margin aspiration, what are the competition levels compared to 2016 versus 2024? Because I would assume the market has gotten a lot more competitive. So it would be not really, to... not really. First of all, I again we correct you. It was not 25, 28. It is but more yes, like 32 yes. percent, 32 yeah, yeah. percent. Um, competition, uh, you know, there is nothing. I mean, it, nothing new about competition. We have been there, done that. They have been around. Uh, then the the faces change, the names change, the pecking order may change, um, but the number of players has been, you know, as long as uh, it has always been. Uh, so there is really nothing, no nothing different about competition. Like I said, we just some some the players have changed. So we have uh, faced competition and. And, uh, um, you know, all through our, uh, you know, all through our history. Uh, so really nothing significant uh, has changed. And at the end of the day, it is more people who copy Symphony's products. That's all. Yeah, we've seen that. Okay, super. Thank you so much. It's reflected also in our market share. Correct. So, uh, it remains in that. Correct. Really, that's, that's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ayush C from Shravas Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yes. Uh, yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity. I just wanted to understand, leaving all the countries aside, I just want to understand how the demand scenario is in India and going forward, how are you going to cater to this demand? Can you speak on the, can you use your handset, please? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to understand how is the demand scenario playing out in India, leaving all the other countries aside, and how are you going to cater to this demand going forward? Demand scenario, I, I think we just spoke all this while we've been talking about that the demand has been unprecedented uh, because of the summer, um, and we are catering to it. 
All right. Any any new uh, product launches in line? Not really. Um, you know, we are we are, we are. I mean, nothing uh, nothing exceptional for us. You know, we are continuously uh, introducing new products. Uh, we've been doing that, you know, all the every year, and we will continue to do that going forward. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Naksh, uh, Lakshmi Narayanan KG from Tunga Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, two questions. One is um, uh, our uh, on the standalone thing. Our uh, advertising uh, um, has actually come down. Uh, I just wanted to understand, uh, um, you know, what is the, is there a it, it, whether it will it, it will get um, uh, you know we are booking lower this quarter. The next quarter it will go up, or how to think about it? We have already answered that a few minutes ago, but we will uh, answer that again. So first, please. Yeah. So, whatever advertisement and sales promotion expenses we have incurred in 23, 24, that is normal. In 22, 23, in fact, there were some of the one-time advertisement sales promotion expenses like related to D2C, e-commerce, some of the market research and market surveys, some of the overseas studies, etc., etc., so whatever we have incurred in 23, 24, it is normalized. And that's what we had conveyed even in 22, 23. And secondly, uh, our overall or most of the market spend happens in March quarter and June quarter. And depending upon how season uh, unfolds and depending upon the requirement, uh, that is spread between these two quarters. Got it. And, and what is the freight and forwarding charges uh, uh, in the standalone for the full year? I think that we can answer you separately. We don't have the figure readily available. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Gajale from Haithong Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, sir, I just have one question, you know, given most of my questions are answered. Now, uh, it's, it's it's a small thing, but, uh, uh, you know, the, the loan that we have given to the Chinese entity and, uh, you know, the uh, the impairment that we've done in, in this particular year, could you tell me how much of the loan is still outstanding? Is there 60, closer to 60 crore after this impairment that is outstanding? So overall loan, including outstanding interest, was about 61 crore, out of okay. which 7.80 impairment has been provided for. It doesn't mean it has been written off. It is provided for. So remaining is uh, about 53 CR. Okay. And uh, and you, uh, you know, how much time do you think you you can actually recover this loan in? You know, because I'm just trying to think, uh, will there will there be more impairments, uh, you know, and possible write off sometime in future, given the performance of the entity that we have seen uh, for the past couple of years. So uh, let me take you through Chinese acquisition. When we acquired the company, it was a bankrupt company. And on a top line of 50 crore, it was incurring the losses of 16 crore. So we acquired the company just for about 15 million rupees. And at that time, the guidance given was in three to five years time, we will break it even. And that's what we actually achieved in three years. Uh, because the acquisition objective was, apart from various complementary strengths, really the sourcing strengths, design and development, R&D, access to Chinese market, etc. However, post that, that is in 2018-19, post achieving the break-even, on account of COVID and due to a variety of other reasons, it completely disrupted. However, for last two years, again, it is back on track, and the EBITDA, of course, it is small, this is total, but this is the highest ever EBITDA what we have registered uh, in current year. And we expect this to grow further, 
and we don't expect in nutshell any write off or impairment we expect the cash flow and profitability to improve and hence the loan to return hopefully even impairment also we should be in a position to reverse okay fair enough. so that's uh, the only thing that i had thank you very much and uh, best wishes for the uh, very strong uh, season that we are looking at in fy25 thank you thank you the next question is from the line of aditya bhartia from investec please go ahead um hi good evening sir um so my first question is uh, on inventory situation in the us uh because we had spoken about they being restocking uh, uh, carried out in the last uh, few quarters or another a year or so so are we starting to see demand improving uh, which can uh, in a uh, uh, climatic profitability and performance going forward no couldn't understand your question and if you can use the handset please aditya uh Aditya can you please repeat the question by using the handset So my question is uh, uh, on uh, uh, the demand situation in the US we are seeing massive these talking taking place over there uh, because of uh, muted demand conditions are we starting to see an improvement in performance in the US which in turn can uh, aid performance of uh, climate tech as well not at the moment at the moment what whatever i said earlier in case you heard it uh, with uh, with regard to climate technology is all limited to australia uh, the us is something that we are not considering whatever happens in the us will be an upside understood understood so at this stage we we are not seeing any gain shoots uh, if in case they play out then uh, that that can provide a bit of an upside correct understood sir and on the domestic business uh, uh, while i really appreciate uh, the candid comments and uh, uh, the insights that you shared on margin but i'm just wondering uh, uh, if we are having a fairly strong demand scenario then uh, would the focus be more on market share or on margins is is there a scope of improving market share a little more by maybe just uh, keeping the margins where they are as opposed to looking for an expansion the uh, it will essentially be on the bottom line you know uh, so uh, so it is it is an, it is a sort of a good combination of market share and margin so we are not going to forsake volumes uh, but we will try and we will maximize volumes and maximize margins understood sir understood uh, and and uh, one last bit uh on the northern part of the country sorry i could not completely understand uh, uh, how exactly demand trends have been uh, uh because uh, uh, has the summer properly set in and, and have you started seeing very strong growth in north as well or so far it yes. has been in other parts of yes. the market north india is yet to fire and we expect it to happen you know any time soon now and so uh, but given that north is uh, the bulk of room uh, air coolers market uh what does it mean for the overall air cooler industry or our sales let's say in in the month of april if you could just kind of give some indications around that um well you know north is going to sort of it you know summer is going to set in it's in all these years it never has been that the summer has an uh, you know set in just a matter mm-hmm. of time uh so in fact we are sort of in one sense glad that it did not happen so far because otherwise we would have been burning the candle at both ends you know we would have been not been able to meet the demand for both the south and the north had it happened uh, simultaneously so you know it's good that it the, the summer is staggered so we are able to cater to the demand and not really uh, you know have to forsake any demand any sales so sure, sir and and north would be what proportion of our business i mean again those are uh, you know numbers that we sort of don't uh, uh, disclose uh, but of course it's a, it's a, it's the largest market in the country right right okay. that, that that's really helpful sir thank you so much for for, for these insights thank you aditya thanks thank you 
for participants who have joined the question queue, we request you to please pick up your handset to ask your question after your name has been announced. We have the next question from the line of Shraddha Kapadia from Share India. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Hello. No, it doesn't seem. No, we are. You're not audible. You please use your handset. Shraddha, the Hello? line. Hello. Is this better? Yes. Please go. Hello. Is yeah, better. better. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, congratulations on the good set of numbers. Actually, I just had one question. Like, considering this year it's election, so are we expecting any, you know, increase in the revenues due to election, or have we witnessed similar trends? Election, to the best of my memory, has never had any major impact on uh, on our sales. Um, so you know, it is the the summer, the severity of the summer, is the only criteria that impacts sales. Oh uh, no! So actually, uh, if we have the rallies and everything, and the public gathering, so there we normally see the air coolers and everything. So. Uh, that was the main point. No, sure. no, so sure. So they do use our coolers. You will find our air coolers on the stage also behind every political yes. leader that uh, is giving a speech. You will, what the coolers that you see would most likely be a symphony. Uh, but yes. uh, but sure that happens. But that does not you know lead to a huge surge in sales. Okay, okay, okay. And just one more question. So in terms of adjacent fees. Is there any uh, specific product which we have seen, you know, performing very good or some product which you would like to highlight? No, so the only adjacency that we have got into are tower fans, which are also doing very well. But within air coolers, it is the segment of kitchen cooling fans uh, that we elaborated, uh, you know, uh, at the beginning of the of the of the session uh, that are also doing well, which have been introduced recently and uh, are doing already quite well. Uh, so, uh, so all in all, you know, you've seen the numbers. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shahzad from Evolve Media. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Am I audible? Yeah, actually, I don't have any questions. The question has already been answered regarding the ad spend. So, thank you very much for giving me time. My, my queue has already been solved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mayur Parkeria from Wealth Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, am I audible properly now? Yes, sir, you're audible. Please go ahead. Uh, so, so thank you uh, for taking my question again. Uh, so, uh, two questions from my side. Uh, but again, you know, you know, first I wanted to actually give a uh, give a uh, token of appreciation for the management. You know, on the Australian subsidiary, it's been a very long journey for us uh, from FY19 onwards, and the kind of you know pain we went through uh, over these years. You know, um, so if I remember correctly, again, uh, you know, 250 60 crores of the top line when we had acquired that uh, subsidiary. Uh, over these five years, what would have been the Accumulated loss, uh, or rather uh, cash loss, which would have uh, happened over these years in Australian subsidiary. Yeah, give us a minute. Meanwhile, uh, if you have another question, until that figure is compiled. Yeah. So uh, now that you know, uh, uh, sir, you were mentioning like you know, most uh, synchronized uh, all the international subsidiaries that happened uh, in terms of you know asset light model, in terms of uh, cost structures, uh, rationalization. So can we now uh, safely say that the international subsidiaries will no longer be a drag on the, uh, the domestic uh, numbers and uh, not only drag but also any kind of support and uh, any kind of pressure on the balance sheet PNL and from here on uh, the focus is to grow next two three years and if that is what if the interpretation is correct can you help us with because it's been a very long journey can you help us with some targets or something which we can look forward to for that information from the international subsidiaries that's it that's it. 
so two things first of all you know uh, it would be uh, you know we would not like to give a sort of a what is it called uh, forward looking statement a forward looking statement however we must also uh, point out that the journey got long became longer because of covid had it had covid not happened then the journey would have been over long ago because of covid we did not even we weren't able, we able to go there for 3 years or 2 years um, you know we could not even visit they could not go to china chinese couldn't go there uh, everything sort of came to a standstill so were it not for that uh, things would have been much very different um but uh, we would like to you know we would very at the, at the very minimal like to restore the top line that existed uh, with the uh, given the new uh, uh, the, the 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 latest uh, uh, cost margins and and cost of doing business without that changing with the same percentages growing the top line that is going to be uh, what we would endeavor to do the least and to answer your we have an accumulated loss of 86 crores in the um, in the australian subsidiary and in continuation of the financial uh, and continuation of the financial financial related question just to remind you when we acquired to mexico initially for 5 6 years we had to continuously pump in Uh, the financial assistance uh, by way of loan which not only recovered interest but it is completely self sufficient and debt free similarly gsk china despite being china almost for last two years no more financial assistance is required hopefully we are striving to achieve the same for climate technology Sir, what has been our export in FY24 uh, from India? Again, that's the number we would we will maybe pull up and separately. Separately, you can talk. Otherwise, oh, in segment okay. reporting, what we are already disclosing, it is there, but we don't have any. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prema Lal Kota from IBM India. Please stay on line, but bane rahe. The person. The current participant seems to have left the line on hold. We will proceed to the closing comments, sir. I would now hand the uh, hand the conference over to the management for any closing comments. Yeah. Thank you, all the participants. for your valuable insight as well as questions and sparing the time also thanks to anirudh and icici security for hosting this conference call looking forward to see and meet all of you in june quarter conference call thank you on behalf of icici securities that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us you may now disconnect your lines